Hey everybody, Sean Swartz here with the Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium Education Department checking in again from the field. I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about plankton. We have a number of scientists and departments here at the aquarium who study plankton, so I thought it would be a fun idea to make a couple of videos uh, talking a little bit about what plankton are, where they live, how you can find them, and just why they're so important in the marine ecosystem. So let's dive in and see what we can learn. Today I'm at a beautiful location on the Sarasota Bay known as New Pass. This area earned its name after the passing of a hurricane in 1848 which created an inlet that had previously not existed. Today New Pass is well known for the diversity of wildlife that passes from the Gulf of Mexico into the Sarasota Bay on a daily basis and is a hot spot for fishing and tourism. Alright, so first and foremost what I wanted to show you is the equipment that I'm going to be using today. This is a plankton net and what you'll notice first and foremost is that the holes on this net are very fine. They're very small uh, with the exception of the opening. And so what I'm going to be doing is just dragging this off the dock doing what we call a trawl. And so our scientists can do a trawl in a number of locations either in the bay or out in the Gulf of Mexico to try to understand the assemblages of plankton or try to understand what type of plankton it is that they're finding out in their sample areas. Uh, so again, I'm gonna be dragging this through the water and uh, we'll take it inside and look in a microscope and see what we can find. All right, so this is a great chance to give you a little background information while I perform the plankton trawl. The word plankton is derived from the Greek adjective planktos, meaning errant or wanderer. And this is important because one of the defining characteristics of plankton is that they are unable to swim against a water current, meaning they are wandering organisms that move wherever they are pushed by the ocean. The plankton we're talking about today are divided into two main groups, plant plankton and animal plankton. Plant plankton are known as phytoplankton and derive their energy from the sun via photosynthesis. Animal plankton are known as zooplankton. An easy way to remember that is that animals live in a zoo. All right, so there's a number of factors that can actually contribute to uh, variations in what we find when we sample for plankton. Uh, things like the salinity or the amount of salt in the water, whether or not there's been a rain event recently. Uh, the tide can affect what types of plankton we're finding. Uh, certainly the amount of sunlight. We have a very sunny, beautiful day today here on the Sarasota Bay. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll take our sample, which we have right here, uh, inside to a microscope and see what we can find. All right, so we're obviously not at Moat Marine Lab right now, but we're in my living room. And so I wanted to bring our sample home. And uh, given the recent restrictions on social distancing in light of COVID-19, I thought this was a great way to um, still explore what we found in our sample with a microscope that I brought here. Uh, so inside of this, um, inside of this flask here, it doesn't really look like much. Um, it just kind of looks like there's maybe some organic material down in there. But uh, if we turn this light off and hold a light up to the underside of our sample here, what you'll start to notice is a lot of little plankton that are swimming toward the light. And so uh, you may recall earlier that I mentioned plankton are affected by the light. And this actually leads me to my first point is that uh, plankton undergo what's called a vertical diurnal migration. So they move in relation to the amount of light that's available in any given day. And so the plankton that we're looking at here, like I mentioned, are attracted to the light on this phone. Uh, but out in their environment, that would mean that they're moving in relation to the sun. And this is really important for phytoplankton, which are the plant plankton, because uh, as they find themselves near the surface of the ocean, that sunlight is essential for photosynthesis, and they need that sunlight to grow and to produce oxygen. All right, so what I've done is moved our sample to a slightly smaller container, as you can see. And right now I'm just trying to aggregate some of the plankton down near the bottom. Uh, I have a dropper here, and what I'm going to do is remove some of the plankton to put onto a slide, and then we can view them with the microscope. We'll see what we can find. It could be anything from the phytoplankton, like I mentioned earlier, the small microscopic plant plankton, to things like crab larvae, fish larvae, uh, any number of things, really. So let's see what we can find. So hopefully we got some good things inside of there. Let's go ahead and 
put them on our slide. Let's see if we can get them. It doesn't really look like much. I know they're moving around really quickly and that's kind of the way plankton move. They dart. They have a really hard time moving through water. Uh, if you think about water for a creature this size, it's microscopic. It's very viscous. It's very hard for them to swim. They don't have strong muscles to push. They just kind of have those tails or those appendages they can use to flick and move their way through the water. We can actually see a lot of copepods in here right now. They're uh, a really interesting creature, one of the most abundant organisms on our planet actually, and a big part of the marine food web, the base of the marine food web. Um, they have those appendages that kind of hang off to the sides of their bodies and that increases their surface area. And during a vertical diurnal migration where they're moving up and down in the ocean, uh, multiple times a day, that can help slow their ascent or descent uh, by increasing or decreasing their surface area. Holy moly! Copepod party! This interesting little creature is commonly referred to as an arrow worm. There are more than 120 species of arrow worms currently described, and identifying the individual species can be very difficult. These creatures are predators in the plankton world and can often be found stalking and consuming prey like copepods. That looks like a little crab larva. Hard to tell exactly which species at this stage, but a lot of, oh, there's our worm friend. A lot of species actually start their life as a plankton. And so uh, it's not a requirement that an organism is a plankton its entire life. They can spend the first stage of their life uh, for example, fish eggs are considered plankton, uh, but obviously the fish eggs go on to develop into a fish, and so they're no longer considered plankton. What you see here is a type of phytoplankton known as Chytoceros. With more than 400 described species, individual Chytoceros species can be incredibly hard to identify, but all you really need to know is that this organism is essentially a chain of single-celled diatoms that are linked together. These phytoplankton are really important on our planet. Um, in fact, phytoplankton make up um, or comprise over 50% of the oxygen that exists in our atmosphere. So for every two breaths you take, one of those essentially has come from the ocean in the form of phytoplankton that are producing oxygen. So one realization people often come to when they see plankton like this up close and personal is that uh, there's a lot of plankton in the ocean, and that's certainly true. Uh, like I mentioned before, plankton is really the base of the marine food web. It's kind of responsible for everything else that occurs in our ocean. Without them as the basic building block of our food web, there really would be nothing else. So the phytoplankton produce oxygen, which is great for us as organisms that breathe oxygen. Um, but these small organisms like copepods are so abundant that they can feed an entire system of organisms and creatures that swims around in the ocean. So if you see a lot of plankton, in a sample like this, that's actually a sign of usually pretty good environmental health. Uh, plankton are pretty delicate little creatures and they can't always survive uh, if, if the environmental conditions have deteriorated, like if there's bad water quality or if there's pollution in the water. So seeing a sample like this where there's a lot of plankton and a pretty good diversity of plankton is a pretty good indicator of environmental health and a good sign for scientists to see. All right, well that's all for today. Thanks again for joining us. Hopefully you had fun and learned something along the way. Uh, if you like this video, let us know. Leave us a comment or subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Moat Education Online. In the meantime, we hope you're doing well and staying healthy. I'm Sean Swartz, checking in from the field.